I've been here my whole entire life and never wanted to leave. Uh, when I first got married, my wife swore that she would never live out here. And when it came time for us to build a house, we were looking at places to go. And she said, well, the only place I want to live would be either Pleasant View or Plain City. And I said, really, I thought you never wanted to live there. But after she'd come out to the 4th of July here, she said she felt the sense of community was so strong and she loved the people that she was around. So she decided this is where she wanted to make her home. I love Plain City. I, I love that my great-grandparents were settling here. You drive by and you wave. It didn't matter if you knew them or not. You waved to them. And, uh, and I think there's, uh, I think young, young people uh, somewhat still do that. Uh, I've noticed some elementary kids, you'll drive by them and they'll wave, you know, and they, they, they don't know you, just to be friendly. And it's something that, that has always stood out in my mind as uh, people in Plain City were friendly like that. Sometimes you'd be driving down the, down the road and this is how you waved. <laughs> Sometimes they do this <laughs> and that was your wave. Oh, I love Plain City. Uh, absolutely. It's where I want to raise my kids. Great community. Yeah, Plain City is a special place for me. It's, um, a lot of it has to do with growing up here and having my roots here for quite a long time. My ancestors were some of the original settlers here, and that's a great thing of pride for me. And I think of all the people here and growing up when it was still a pretty small town and everyone knew each other, and it was nice. And you could go walk around and say hi. The mosquitoes in Plain City, you don't even know they're here. Or some will tell you that they'll carry you away. Depends on the night and if there's a breeze. Yeah, I think that's what makes Plain City what it is, is that um, uh, anytime you put a call out for help, it's like you get more than you need. And I like that. I like being able to um, be in a community where everyone's so willing to just jump and help. The original school was uh, on the town square about where the tennis courts were. Actually, the old Plain City School was about three or four different buildings, uh, add-ons. <laughs> they, they just kept adding different areas and up to the east and, and the kindergarten rooms and, and the principal's office was changed, everything. It, over the years, it really made a lot of changes. Great teachers. It's a good school. Yeah. I'm such a homebody. I just loved being home. And I knew that I would love teaching in my community. And because I, I knew the people would be great to work with. And, and that's how it was. And it was really nice, too, that the people respected me enough that um, school was at school and we were friends and community members when we were home. And that was nice too. That school had an amazing, to me, an amazing staff and faculty. Um, everybody got along. And um, I, don't, I don't really know the reason why, but everybody just got along. And uh, I think that really added to the stability and, and the uh, comfort zone type thing at the school. And uh, a lot of that, I think, goes back to, uh, I, can't, I can't really say too much before Robert Stewart, um, uh, but uh, uh, the, is the principal. Larry Charlton was there as the principal. And, uh, and then others that followed them, um, just, I don't know, they just had a knack, I think, for picking the people who would be able to work together well. And um, it was wonderful. It was a wonderful, I had, it was a wonderful 23 years there for me. Quite a few uh, people from Plain City that had been played professional ball. And Elmer Singleton was the first one, and he had played for, the, I think, the Pittsburgh Pirates for years. But the, the sports was the big thing. I mean, everybody on 
Saturday afternoon, there was always a ball game up here on the park, and right exactly where the diamond and things are now. And uh, they, uh, that, that was a ritual. <laughs> Um, it was definitely a community activity where everybody assembled together and that was the thing to do is to go up and watch the softball games and the whole community would turn out and you would have the, the lines lined with people with chairs and selling dollar hamburgers and fries and we would just watch the, the softball games and that was that's just some of my favorite memories of life. You, you battled over water and women in Plain City. <laughs> and I remember my dad met Ted Christensen one night up up on, on the head gate. And they were, I think they were fighting over whose water turn it was. And they, they had pretty good, they had pretty good fight. They both came away with black eyes and <laughs> all over water. <laughs> I do remember that they planted uh, sugar beets. Sugar beets was a real big cash crop out here in Plain City at one time. And peas. And um, I imagine they have always had alfalfa. Uh, well, we, we always had red potatoes. Uh, we'd, we'd sell them to the Weber School District and then just out of the, out of the shed to anybody that wanted to come and get them. Times we'd take them up to um, Fruit Way, is that what they call it, in Willard, and sell some up there, but mostly to people in Plain City. The word word spread by word of mouth, and, and uh, people came from all over the area. Also, Penunzio's was another big potato farmer that people used to come and, and get from as well. Um, I'm sure that I had the same feelings that uh, lots of other young people did especially when you get up around uh, 12 13 14 you know oh we've got to go far i mean you know we we uh, brent and i my brother and i would get up at uh, 4 a.m is before there was daylight savings time and we'd go out and hoe the tomatoes until around noon and then we'd come home and dad would fix us lunch and we'd lay down out, out here on the on the uh on the carpet and and have a nap and there was a time when I'm sure that that uh, it was a drudgery, but later on I had great enjoyment from from doing it. I really think that working on the farm gave me a work ethic that I would not otherwise have had, and I was really grateful that I had the opportunity also to uh, have my boys my two boys work with me on the farm because I think it taught them a really good work ethic as well. It was great. You could ride horses. You could. My dad um, taught me how to drive a tractor when I was really young and I remember driving long before I ever had my license. You know, back when my dad farmed, he probably had one of the largest dairy farms in Weber County. Him and Jimmy, Papa George, and some of the other farmers like Archie and, and that. My dad milked about a hundred and six head of cattle every day and he had no boys so and I had asthma so I got out of that job but farming was his whole life. I'll never forget and I, I must have been like around oh, nine or ten so in the six probably sixty two somewhere around that nineteen sixty two our our haystack started on fire and it started all the barns on fire started started everything I mean it, it burned my dad's buildings right down to the ground and he was deer hunting my mom and I had gone down to the barn and to burn some baling twine strings and they think that a little bird picked up one of the burning strings and carried it and dropped it on the haystack they think that's how it started but I'll never forget the community support in that. You couldn't drive down North Plain City Road. Every every person that lived in Plain City came to help try to put it out and to fight it. And I remember Archie Hunt crawling under those burning 
barns to get my dad's heifers out and get some of the the calves out of their little boxes that they had and stuff. So just, you know, great community support. And that was a cool thing too when my dad when my dad's farm burned down. They all the farmers got together and put up his hay and helped him, you know, a lot of people were putting up helping my dad put up his stuff before they even did their own. So you did that back then and everybody helped each other. Um somebody else, I think it was Ted. Um hat was in a either in a, a really bad accident or got sick and I remember all the all the farmers pulled together and put his crops up. So you just did that for each other, regardless if it, you were at the head gate fighting over water or not. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of grocery stores and and mercantile places. The Englands had one. Uh, Ma's had one. Olson's had theirs, and uh, there there could have even been more than that. But those are the ones that I can remember, and they uh, if even if you took an egg up to Wilmer Ma you could uh, get a piece of candy or they'd take uh, empty soda water bottles and trade them in for candy the kids would and uh, then there was two lumber uh, companies Ma's had one and uh, Chester England had his lumber company I remember going over to uh, not Jack's garage but Cliffs. And all the guys were there sitting on the cooler, you know, just talking and laughing and telling jokes. <laughs> that was, I'd always go over there to get a popsicle. You'd go to Cliff for popsicles and you'd go to, to the store for penny candy. So. <laughs> I really believe that's, that's why, who I am today and, and my core values and, and who I am as a person and a, as a father and as a husband is because of Plain City, Utah.